And I also want to thank Patrick Trejo for taking the time to actually kind of lead us on this charge this morning. Um, so excited to be here today with you all. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming. I know it's early, it's cold, uh, but it shows just kind of the support that we're starting to gain uh, with the Boys and Girls Club organization. Uh, this is our third year doing this, these breakfasts, um, and this is just kind of our opportunity to kind of let the public know what we're doing in our clubs. Um, this morning, I'm actually going to kind of talk about the marketing video a little bit. Um, so I kind of said everything I needed to, so I'm actually finished, so thank you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what you saw in the video is kind of what we're all about. Um, that's our marketing video. We never really had one. Um, it's going to help us try to raise the money because we want to show the public what, what, what are, what's our footprint on our organizations? Uh, we operate two clubhouses, one in Prescott and one in Prescott Valley. Uh, through those clubhouses, we see a lot of kids every day. And a lot of it is because that we're able to raise funds um, and, and uh, provide a safe program to kids where you know the fees shouldn't be a barrier for our families to come to the Boys and Girls Clubs. That's why we have the lowest fees for our after school and summer programs in the area. No child is turned away because of financial reasons. That's the biggest thing that attracted me to the Boys and Girls Clubs 10 years ago. Uh, but in fact, 62% of our, ch our children uh, qualify for free or reduced lunch, um, and 48% of those uh, children uh, come from single parent households. Um, the average cost to attend the Boys and Girls Club is $30 a month. So as you can see, your support is vital to the operations of the Boys and Girls Clubs. When you walk into the clubs, uh, you're gonna see a whole lot of kids, but you're gonna see a whole lot of kids doing a whole lot of things. They're engaged in meaningful and purposeful programming. That's the biggest thing that we try to get across with our after school and summer programs. Our programs cover three key impact areas. Um, the video kind of spoke to that. Uh, the first is academic success because we believe that every child should be ready um, after high school and have a plan for their future. I don't care if it's college, trade school, or, or in the military. Uh, programs like our Power Hour program that the parents love, um, that's dedicated space and time in our clubs for, for our members to work for, with their homework with staff and volunteers. Um, our second one is healthy lifestyles. Um, we actually, we want the kids to, to live a healthy lifestyle. So we teach that in our programs. And that's through programming um, like our healthy habits uh, programs. And also Kate and Cena are here. Um, we just started a mountain biking program. We want to get the kids active in our clubs. Uh, we say that we want to uh, at least have the kids playing or doing something active at least one hour a day um, in the after school programs. And the third one is good character and citizenship. Uh, we try to teach our kids that they need to be part of the community. Um, over in the Prescott Valley branch uh, last year, they did a, uh, a, a blanket drive for the Humane Society. Our Prescott Clubhouse this year also did a canned food drive for the, for the food bank. So we're trying to get them uh, engaged in the community and teach them that they are part of the community. Um, some of the individual programs, and that's what makes the Boys and Girls Club is a great thing, is that when we hire our staff and we bring our volunteers in, we really want them to bring something new to the Boys and Girls Club. So that's why you see things like a mountain biking club that was started. Um, in the video, you saw Mr. T leading the robotics program, he, he, um, and he wanted to share his, his knowledge with the kids. Um, but we also have the gardening club, which is huge. Um, and that all goes back to our healthy lifestyles impact area because we're teaching the kids not only how to grow and compost their own uh, food, but we're also bringing in the, the component of, of teaching them how to eat the proper way. Um, so these are just some of the programs that we're doing. There's probably over 100 programs that we run in our clubs throughout the year uh, with our kids. Um, but you know, if you ask any kid, if you come up to them and say, why do you love the Boys and Girls Club? They're not gonna say power out, or we really love Smart Moves, which is our prevention program. Nine times out of 10, they're gonna report, um, give you a report about one of the staff that changed their lives. See, we use our programs as a staff member to engage with our kids and, and to get on some part of their level and, and really find out what this kid is all about. What's his family like? Does he need any special attention, especially when it comes to homework? That's what makes the Boys and Girls Club so unique. 
is that we have those connections with the children that we serve. We think of them as our family. And a lot of the kids, it's their second home. Um, and, you know, with a connection, um, we really train our staff to actually pick up on cues with our, with our members. Um, for instance, uh, a mailer just went out to, to a few people and it really highlighted a kid named Matthew um, in one of our branches. And Matthew came into the club um, and he was kind of shut off. Uh, his parents just got divorced. Um, but, you know, he just he didn't want to engage in anything. And um, one of our staff picked up on that right away. He took him under his wing. And so Ryan um, really, you know, put him in some leadership roles, got him involved. Um, introduce them to new friends um, and today you go into the club and Matthew's kind of the leader of his age group he's helping the younger kids out with their homework and he's really stepped up and he's become a true club kid um, and those are the kinds of kids that we're starting to see because that's the beauty of the club as well is that it's for every child I don't care what your gender your race your economic status the boys and girls club is open for every kid in our community um, with that said, um, <laughs> we've served 621 kids since uh, you know the beginning of the year. Um, our, can, our numbers still are growing, um, but the problem is, is we have a wait list, um, especially in our Prescott Valley Club. Um, kids are starting to come to the club, but they're also what we're seeing is that they're staying there. They're coming every day, and that's huge for us. Um, because one of the things I wanted to share is some statistics, and I've been up here for three years now, and I haven't really gone over some of the, the statistics that are coming out of the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Um, every year, every Boys and Girls Club across the nation takes the National Youth Outcome Initiative Survey. We survey our kids. We wanna know how we're doing, and that's what tells us how we're doing, in the way of safety, programs, you name it, the kids are asked what's going on in the clubs. So through these, this survey, the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, um, they put everything together and they, they have a thing called optimal club experience. And basically that's every type of question all lumped into one to kind of really see how we're doing as an organization. Uh, it's, 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 I'm proud to say um, that we're 10% higher than the national average on how we're performing. We have a long way to go but at least we know in our clubs that we're doing the right things. Um, and let me just, and, and part of that survey, the Boys and Girls Schools of America um, put together a few, few key findings. I'm just gonna read a few off. Um, members who attend two or more days per week are nearly twice as likely to have good conflict resolution skills as other members. 93% who attended two or more days per week believe schoolwork is meaningful and important, which is a key indicator of school engagement. 82% of members fourth grade and up who attend two or more days per week are on track to graduate high school on time. And 91% of members who attend the club regularly say they can stand up for what is right, even if their friends disagree. Now, the best statistic of this whole thing is that almost 70% of our after school members have attended the club two or more days a week. So that just kind of shows you some of the impact that we're having on the kids that we serve on a daily basis at both clubhouses. Um, you know, and, and you know, Joe's gonna be up here kind of later on just to address, you know, we do have a waiting list, but we do have plans for that. We also have plans to expand our programs in other areas. Uh, we're partnering with Prescott High School uh, to start a multimedia program in January. Um, that will just be working in conjunction with the multimedia teachers so we can start teaching kids valuable skills that will help them um, move forward um, through high school, like video production. Uh, we're even teach DJing that we got a nice uh, uh, donation from the Rotary Club. Um, but we are putting it to use, I promise. Um, so those kinds of things. We're also now in the talks with Chino Valley, and it's, it's just the initial stages. Um, but we're looking to put a teen center in their, their old community center in there. They're having a lot of issues with their teens in that community. Um, so we want to step up and, and offer the, you know, what we do best, working with kids and bringing those programs into Chino. <laughs> um, and I think one of the big key um, findings, and it was in the video, um, was that for every dollar invested in, boy, in local boys and girls clubs, there's almost a return of $10 in the community. That came from a study at the University of Michigan last year. The Boys and Girls Clubs of America 
um, partnered with Mich University of Michigan. They really wanted to know what the investment was in the community. And what they found and how they really came up with that number is because they saw that club members have improved grades. You know, they're going on um, to, to get a post-secondary education of some sort. Um, there's, you know, minimal use of al alcohol and drug use. You know, we keep the kids busy. You know, that's part of our Smart Moves Prevention Program. We teach them wrong and right. Um, and also, the big thing too is parent earnings. Um, because our fees are so low, and we do work with FICPA with parents and make sure every kid can come um, because of finan no financial reasons, parents are able, are, are able to work. There's not now a choice between do I work or do I stay home with our kids. Um, so that's just kind of some of the impact on the Boys and Girls Clubs. Um, I really invite you to please come for a tour and kind of see it up personal because I can stand up here all day and tell you why the Boys and Girls Club is so great. Um, but if you don't, you know, are able to come by and see kids in action and actually see the programs in action, you can really get a, a good sense of what we're trying to accomplish in our clubs. Um, so again, thank you so much uh, for being here today. Um, and hopefully I'll, I'll hear from you guys soon for, for a local tour. Thanks so much. Thank you, Gerald. <laughs> and being a former board of uh, director, um, it, I can attest to uh, going over to the clubs in the afternoons and hearing the kids laughing and smiling and running around. And something that Gerald did touch on is, uh, you know, there are improvements going on at, at the clubs, you know, when, they, when they're able to. One of the big improvements that I love about the Prescott Club is the new basketball court in the back. So uh, definitely go and uh, check that out. So, um, you know, see the kids go play basketball and have a lot of fun. So uh, right now, uh, we would like to introduce Cassandra Johnson, who is a single mother whose kids attend the Boys and Girls Clubs while she works hard to make a living. She wanted to share her story today about why the clubs are so important to work the working community. Cassandra? Thank you for having me. Um, I moved to the valley, and, or I moved from the valley to Prescott um, about five years ago for a change of lifestyle to bring my kids out of the valley. Um, and from there, they have been in the Boys and Girls Club in the East Valley. Um, so um, that was a no-brainer for me. It, immediately, one of my first moves was to just jump right into the Boys and Girls Club because making that transition for them, that's, like Gerald was saying, that is their second home. Um, so that was my first move initially, um, before I even found work. Um, so they were happy to do, that made the transition for them okay. They were very nervous that they grew up down there, their families down there. Um, but the moment that I said, well, there's a boys and girls club up there, they lit up and they were okay with the move. Um, transplanting children, um, I'm sure that some of you could identify, is, is very, very challenging when they have their friends and they have a family. Um, so that was the key to make this very, more of a softer transition for my children. Um, so that being said, just a little bit about myself. Um, growing up, I was a child of divorce, um, and I went back and forth between parents until I was kicked out of my home at 17. Um, during that time, I never had a place to go uh, after school. I got into a lot of trouble. Um, during that time, uh, so since I had no place to go, um, after school, I was on the streets a lot, um, out very, very late, um, causing trouble. That's where I kind of found things. I mean, school ended at what, three o'clock and then you have until whatever time to, um, to just get in bed if your parents tell you or they don't tell you. So I found that, um, I didn't really have somewhere to go. So I engaged in. Um, every other child down in the valley, and I grew up down kind of in Southside Chandler. Um, so I was just kind of running around wild. Um, and so at the time, it didn't seem unsafe because that was just how I was adapting. Um, and I adapted to the dangers of that, and I just did what I needed to do to maintain. So that was kind of my situation from um, a very young age, from probably you know 10 until 17. Um, you know, little did I know how that would affect me. Um, 
in the long term, developing survival behaviors like this, um, not having um, an actual structure um, that was provided for me with positive and, uh, reinforcement and positive programming, I was able to just kind of make my own decisions in that way. Um, so, you know, I embrace the strength of it now, um, but I made many mistakes in that time that would kind of change my life forever. Um, I got involved with drugs at a young age, and this is kind of grimy, I'm gonna just kind of say it right out there. I was arrested 10 times before my 18th birthday. Um, I was just looking for my place, and I didn't have that, so I found it kind of out, you know, in punk rock bands and, you know, staying out late and, you know, all these things. Um, and I'm telling you this because it's, it's the reality of someone that doesn't have that guidance um, outside of a broken home. Um, so, you know, after, after all that, that's kind of my story on that and kind of why I, I'm so adamant about having a place for my boys, being a single mom. Um, I had them at a very young age. I had both of them by the time I was 20 years old. Um, and within that first three years, I was a single mom. You know, I really knew how to pick them at that point from kind of my past. So um, not to say that I have any regrets because my boys mean the world to me. Um, and I have two of them. And um, so I was a single mom uh, within three years of that. And, um, and I just, uh, it was, it was a struggle, you know, I had help from my family, I um, kind of bounced around a little bit, I was just trying to find my groove on how to be a good mother, and um, and this was before they were at the age of being, you know, involved in these kind of clubs and things like that, so it was just kind of me. Um, I got right out there, I had to work, I was working within, you know, a week of having both of them, because that was just how it was, I had to provide, provide, provide. I had a lot of support from my family at that time, um, but it was, a, it was a struggle. And so once I got older to, um, as soon as they could, I could, like I, I put them in, um, in programs that I could find that were affordable. But at the time when, when it's not an after school program, these things are, you know, for two kids, it can be up to $200 a week. Um, so, you know, like Gerald was saying, like where, where is the cost benefit of going to work or staying home with your children? So that was always a struggle for me. Um, so I made it work for a long time. Um, you know, um, but then when they got up to an age where they could be in the Boys and Girls Club, it was it was a no-brainer. I did the research. Um, they were I went to walked into a Boys and Girls Club down in Chandler and with open arms. I mean, they w were willing to work with me. I had just done years of struggling with, you know, um, government assistance programs and this and that. And I was always there, just trying to make this work. And the warmth that I got from the Boys and Girls Club and the way that they were able to reach their hand out and just say, no, we'll work with you. There was, I mean, there was payment plans, there was, you don't have to pay, there was this. And um, immediately my kids took to that. So as they um, kind of grew up a little bit in elementary school, um, that's, that's where they went. They didn't even want to come home. And that was fine with me because then I started spending time there, you know, as much as I could. Um, they're, both my children are very, very different. And this is important because my oldest is a very, like, he's very intellectual, he's very artistic. He's into um, you know tech things and programming. And my youngest is an athlete, and he he's uh, it took it takes a lot more for him to sit down and engage in the academics. But the boys and girls club, like Gerald was saying, they they find out exactly what that kid is like, and and they they completely suit their needs. They completely provide any accommodations to what those particular needs are of that child. And I and I found that they weren't the same for my children. And it was just so organic. The staff was, you know, to have the level of commitment and that the staff has, and it, actual organic commitment, genuine like care that every single staff member that I've met has, um, and that transferred over into the Prescott, uh, into the Prescott location here. Um, it's just been that way since the beginning. So, um, it's just. The, mo the important thing to me, I think, based on my story, is that it provides such a safe environment. I'm so adamant about keeping my kids busy like that because I just remember all these things and how long it took me to get here. Um, and so, uh, they just they teach the kids the importance of the academic discipline um, and exercise and all these um, different important values, but they're also allowing them to be children still. Um, and I just think that's so important to um, just be so organic with it with all these staff members. I'm, 
I see, um, I work in a restaurant downtown now, and I see staff members come in that, that ask me how my kids are when I'm at work, you know? Um, if they haven't said, well, where, where, where's Dorian been? Where's Devin been? Um, and like Gerald was saying, there's a wait list. Um, my kids go back and forth sometimes to like, visit the valley and go back to that, and they're, they just, they want to see their friends there, and they're so involved in, in, in both that um, there, I can come back and there is no wait list for me because they know my kids. And once you, it seems like once you're on there, like he was saying, they stay. Um, that's where they want to be. Um, as far as the, the affordability, I have been able to work. I have to be a single mom. So I'm able to, I'm able to do that, I'm able to provide. I wouldn't be where I'm at um, in, my, in my career and being able to provide for them if it wasn't so affordable, if it wasn't open until 6.30 p.m. Um, so I just, I really believe that the Boys and Girls Club of Prescott, especially since I'm involved in that one now, is they forge leaders of tomorrow. And, and the fact is, is that we need that. We need our kids to have guidance. Um, so, I mean, I guess just essentially, I, I wouldn't be where I'm at without the Boys and Girls Club. So I just, they asked me to come speak, and it's very, I didn't, I kind of put my notes together kind of last minute because I just figured my experience is real. Um, and I can, I've made so many um, friendships with other parents that are like me, and I know that my boys will have these relationships for the rest of their lives. And I see the changes in my kids' behavior. I see my son coming home and he will be honest with me and tell me, hey, I saw a fight today and I wanted to get involved, but I stood up for my friend and I did it. You know, my, my son at 10 years old will come and tell me how he calmly defused the situation. You know, and I attribute that to the Boys and Girls Club. I attribute those behaviors to them, to you guys, to all of this, um, because I didn't have that. And, and it blows me away um, the level of maturity and positivity and there and there's no they, they see no bias against creed religion disability impairment none of that and my and it shows in my kids and they come home and the stories that they have I mean they just warm my heart so um, I think I'm just gonna wrap it up on that I just wanted everyone to know how important it is to have that environment of guidance um, after school and just in general um, and as far as extracurricular goes, there's, I mean, there's field trips involved. Um, I take advantage of every single piece of that. Anything that, any, any program, I, I'll, uh, I'll dish the money out for it because it's that important. So I guess I'll just close on that. Thank you. Thank you, for, uh, Cassandra, for sharing your story. Um, to be able to open up like that takes a lot of strength, so I'm sure I speak on behalf of everyone in the room. And thank you very much. Uh, breakfast is being served. While we uh, have our next few speakers, we do uh, you know, invite you to go ahead and enjoy your breakfast uh, as they come up and uh, speak to you. Um, I'd like to inv uh, invite and introduce Michael Cabalas, who is the Vice Chairman of the Board and owner of the Hacienda Inn, to come up and share a letter that the Boys and Girls Clubs of America received from a grateful parent. Michael. I'm not used to speaking in microphones because I look like I'm hunched over, so I may be standing up and yelling a little bit more, so just kind of bear with me. So uh, thank you everyone for being here this morning. My name is Michael Kubelos and I'm a proud board member of the Boys and Girls Club. Um, and I'd like to thank Cassandra Rivno for four, going on five years for sharing her story. And I'm extremely proud of you for what you've accomplished. So thank you so much. So I've been asked to read a letter that was sent to the headquarters of the Boys and Girls Club some time ago. And it's one that I'm gonna ask you a favor. I know we're here, we're socializing, we see friends. We're here as, as community leaders. Um, and we're networking. What I'm gonna ask you to do is switch and put in your, put on those parent eyes, if you would, and hear this letter from looking at your own kids, if you would, and kind of where this mother was coming from when she wrote this letter. Because we all hit those crossroads, and this is one that I believe we can all experience and kind of look at from, from this individual's perspective, okay? So I'm gonna be kind of going through it because it's kind of a long letter, so I'll just pick kind of the highlights on this. My introduction to the Boys and Girls Club, 
Boys and Girls Club came about in a unique manner. My husband, myself, and our two children, one daughter, age 16, and a son, age 12, had recently moved from a small town where my children had spent most of their lives in a secure and family, very family-oriented society. We were in an average middle-income family with myself in the role of full-time mother. We had always been very active in the neighborhood, school and community activities, participating in soccer, swim team programs for our children, we, moving schools, grades, uh, excuse me, moving from a school grades seven through 12, population 700 students to a middle school of over 1,500, and that was in seventh and eighth grade alone, was a traumatic shock for my son, then a seventh grader. To say that he was miserable here is, is a great understatement. Each day, we held our breath, hoping that he would make it through the school day and begin to adjust to the change in his lifestyle. Our normally outgoing and happy child was becoming an unhappy recluse. Whereas he had been quite popular with his peers, he now spent most of his time alone. One day, I happened to find in the Penny Saver newspaper uh, an article announcing basketball signups at a place I'd never heard of called the Boys Club at that time. Upon arriving for the first time in three months, I saw my son relax and smile as he gave an affirmative answer. This marks a turning point for our son and consequently, consequently for our whole family. My son went on to spend every moment at the boys club. He became a counselor in training in the summer camp program, took to the Smart Moves training program, which is a, uh, teaches children about dangers of drug and alcohol, and then went on to teach it to other kids as well. I cannot say thank you enough to the staff and volunteers who knew and believe that the contribution they, they make with their time, energy, and financial support is instrumental in providing children with a positive influence in their lives. That is sorely needed at this time. Many of the children served by the club come from single parent homes and the positive male role models found in the staff provide some of these children with the only male influence in their lives. The staff provides loving discipline, affection, approval, encouragement, help with school problems, lessons in, mor in morale, teaches a sense of value, as well as provides a safe haven and sense of direction in the lives of children. The programs available can satisfy almost every need, from the artistic and creative to the athletic. Opportunities to excel are, are evident in every endeavor undertaken by a child. My favorite point to make about the Boys Club which at that time was the Boys Club, Boys and Girls Club, is that each and every participating child is a recognized as special, unique, and valuable. This is a gift of immeasurable proportion to these children in a time in which self-esteem is essential for survival. I could go on and on and on about the great service the Boys and Girls Club provide for the community. But to suffice, it is to say that the family, my family and I owe the club a great debt of gratitude. I am grateful, proud, and privileged to be associated with such a group of fine and dedicated individuals. So this letter was written um, by a mother, and her name is Vera Kublas, and that was written in 1993 on my behalf. Um, and I can honestly, and, and Karen Cassandra, I would not be on this podium, I can guarantee you. Um, talking to you as an individual, as a club kid, if I had not had the Boys and Girls Club to save me, because it, it literally, I was at those crossroads, and that's why I ask you to look at it from a parent's perspective. We've all been there where we could have gone two different directions, and I would have gone the wrong one, I can guarantee you, if the club had not been there for me. So, all of you being here today, thank you. Genuinely, thank you, because I am up here because of the donations and because of the generosity and the leadership that you provide. Um, from our community officials to our police department to the, the volunteer that just shows up one day and says, hey, I want to give back. And, and I genuinely want to thank you all for what you do. So thank you and you know, thank you on behalf of all the kids. So. You know, when I was on the board of directors, uh, I used to sit next to Michael all the time. We always used to have to be separated because of the fact that we were those two kids in the back of the classroom that, you know, would snicker and whatnot. And I, I miss Michael and, and, and you can tell uh, the club's really made a huge impact on his life. So thanks for sharing that, Mike. Appreciate that, brother. All right. Um, 
at this time, we'd like to you know continue to eat breakfast and everything. Um, we would like to introduce uh, Joe Baines, uh, our board chair and also uh, director of Parks and Recreation for the city of Prescott. Uh, he too, along with Gerald uh, and Gerald's leadership and Joe's leadership has been very, very influential uh, in the growth of the clubs over the past few years. So, uh, Joe. talking about this microphone's perfect <laughs> yeah, I want to thank you all for taking time out of your busy day to, to share a little time with us and I get the easy part here because I could get to share all the exciting news about things that we're doing with the club and the momentum that we have with the club and I'm really proud of what you've got going on and I think you will be too and uh, we're glad to see you guys here that represents you being friends of the club and that's what we really want to build is friends of friends of the club we want to have a long reach in the community because we, we're here to stay. So as Gerald mentioned earlier, we have a wait list at both of the clubs and, and it's only a problem if you don't have a solution. And we have a solution. Uh, we have a good solution. Just recently, thanks to the City of Prescott and the CDBG Fund, the Community Development Block Grant Fund, we were able to build an outdoor basketball court at the Prescott Club. The reason that's so important is because uh, if you haven't been to that space, it used to be an adult center, and it's a multi-level building, and we do a very creative job of moving the kids through because we try to keep the kids, kind of the age groups, similar age groups together, and we rotate them through the, the rooms as they go through different programs. So really, this gave us a space, outdoor space, where we can do a lot of things, not just basketball. They play pickleball out there. They play field hockey out there. I mean, that's just a really safe and closed place for those kids to play. So really, that serves as an expansion for the, for the Prescott Club, and that'll serve it well. Um, the other exciting news, and this is thanks to the town of Prescott Valley and another CDBG grant, uh, we, we received a $645,000 grant uh, to do another building out in Prescott Valley where the real need, I mean, we have a wait list at both clubs, but Prescott Valley is a long wait list. So this CDBG grant through um, the town of Prescott Valley is very important to us to be able to build about 5,000 square foot of additional space as well as a remodel um, uh, the existing space that we have which will allow us then to to capture you know as many kids that want to come come to the club as possible again we nobody gets turned away the, the wait list is just horrendous for us um, that that's not something that we want obviously so with these two great um, uh, opportunities that we have here now we'll be moving forward in the next year with a capital campaign uh, to raise the rest of the money to uh, finish the building, uh, especially in PV, as well as some other uh, additions we want to do, improvements we want to do in Prescott Valley. The other good news I get to report today is that we've had a substantial donation, um, a matching fund for the project in Prescott Valley in, in the six-figure neighborhood. So a very generous donation uh, from a family who wants to use that as matching money. So uh, I encourage anybody to take up that challenge uh, on that match and more information will be forthcoming on all that stuff but really exciting uh, that was just recent a few days ago that we got that news so we're very very excited about that so a substantial amount of that funding is in place for 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 that building out there and that capital campaign so we're really excited uh, we'll be moving shortly through uh, Ryan Judy uh, Tom Prescott Valley and the CDBG grant and going out for architects so we're we're real close to breaking ground very very excited and uh, the project must be completed in two years, so you can tell I mean, these things take time, but we're, we're on fast track. So very exciting news. The other exciting news I get to announce today is one of our fundraisers. It's a new fundraiser, and it's called Dancing for Our Stars. So it's modeled after the Dancing with the Stars that you see on TV. Uh, what we'll do is we'll have um, a get-together over here at the Haciampa, uh, dinner drinks, hors d'oeuvres drinks, and then uh, over to the Elks Theater for the competition, um, and we're really excited about it. So save the date on that. That's April 21st that that's going to happen, and uh, tickets go on sale this month on our website, so come check our website, uh, but we're really, really excited about that. So with that, um, I think we have some of the dancers here, so I'm going to read the, the names of the dancers, and... Uh, the, uh, if you're here, please stand. Uh, Cheryl Rowland. Uh, 
Uh, Lisa Dandos. Lisa will, will, will be dancing. Uh, Mackenzie Van Warmer. Mackenzie will also be dancing. Uh, Marnie Yule. Marnie, are you here? Let's see Marnie. Uh, Sheila Polk. Uh, and on the men's side, we have Brad Fain. I don't think Brad is here. Uh, Father Darren uh, from Sacred Heart Church will be one of our dancers. Uh, Larry Stephan, Emory Riddle University. Uh, Steve Shiska, Prescott City Councilman. Dr. Uh, Todd Geiler, and uh, I'm already standing, but you know, I I'm in, Joe Bankhouse. <laughs> so we're really excited about that. Keep checking our website for that, and, and we really want to promote it in the community. We think it's gonna be a, uh, something that we can continue to do year after year and create excitement in the community and raise money for a great, great cause. Uh, I would like to, uh, um, acknowledge our board members. Um, so if I read your name and you're here, if you'd stand, I'd appreciate it. Michael Kubalas. That's really Kubalas. Kubalas, sorry. Uh, Linda Thine. Okay. Alex Vakula. Uh, Prescott Valley Police Chief Brian Darrell. Elena Sandwick, uh, Steve Schock, uh, James Carr, James is not here, they had a death in the family, so he's not here until the 5th, Mike Sardi, Tom Toth, somebody has to work, huh? Uh, I do want to thank Tom Toth for that video. Tom, that was Tom that did that at his expense and time and did the voiceover, so thank you. Uh, Prescott Police Chief Debbie Black. And Drew Diener. I just want to say you know, I'm so proud to be involved with a board like we have, a very active, engaged board. Uh, we had an impromptu less than 24 hour notice meeting last night so we could share the good news about the substantial match um, and i was proud to say nine out of our 11 board members were there in 24 hour notice so these people are committed and i really i think it shows it shows in the clubs um, and I'm, I'm really just be proud to be associated with them also i'd like to thank the staff um, led by our executive director gerald chostak you know i spent quite a bit of time in the clubs through uh, my kids and foster kids and different things and I see those interactions that Cassandra brought up that I think you know I see every day there's a true care um, we fostered a kid for a period of time and I know he was gone because we went on vacation for a week and they were asking where's Michael I mean they really care um, and, and that just that's not something that every program has so I'm really proud of the staff that we have um, you know these tried and tested programs they don't work unless they're implemented on a consistent and correct basis and, and they do that every day so they care for the kids and then I also lastly like to acknowledge Kristen and Nicole if you both stand please I know you guys are here <laughs> these ladies are the glue they're, they're the joke that makes all this stuff happen I mean we, we just kind of stand by the sidelines I know I said we do a lot of stuff but really we don't they do um, lastly, I'd just kind of like to share my story, my, my, I guess how I got engaged with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, in 2011, I went through a leadership program called Prescott Area Leadership, which I'm sure a lot of you I know have gone through or are at least aware of. And at that time, as our second year commitment, um, we either had to join a board or, or do a project in the community. I did both, but I wanted to join a board and I had been involved with Little League for 13 years. I knew I wanted to be involved with a youth-based organization. And, I knew a little bit about Boys and Girls Club, or at least I thought I did. Um, and so I joined the board. I uh, didn't have a tour of the club, just kind of went and joined the board, and really just didn't feel engaged, totally engaged with everything. Well then, after a period of time, my daughter, um, I started taking my daughter to the club, and that's when I really started seeing the programs. I really started seeing the staff. I really started to see how you know the programs and the people have an effect uh, on people's lives. My daughter, uh, both my wife and I work, we work long hours, 
with the power hour, we would get home, we'd pick Faith up from, from uh, Boys and Girls Club, homework stuff. Um, very, very important. Um, and and it, the friendship she's gained and all those things. So fast forward a little bit to uh, our foster child that we had for a period of time, Michael. Uh, we got him when he was six years old. Uh, and, you know, I'd ask him every day, we'd sit around the table and eat, and I'd say, well, what's the best part of your day? That's what I do with my kids. And, the same answer all the time but with michael it was always boys and girls club and, and why because i have all my friends at the boys and girls club so it really affected his life so the next little piece of the boys and girls club the onion as we peel it is currently we have a family staying with us that needs a hand up just for a period of time and they really truly all they need is a hand up uh, that's all they're asking for they have two kids uh, eight years old and ten years old and they attend the boys and girls club i can tell you for a fact that this family, the only way they make it is if both of those parents work. And the only way both of those parents can work is if they have an organization like the Boys and Girls Club that's very, very low fee for them to be able to, you know, raise their family in their own home and do those things. So really that that's repeated again and again and again. I just happen to see through those three experiences what the Boys and Girls Club is, and that's why I'm dedicated to the Boys and Girls Club. That's why I appreciate the partnerships we have in the community and all of the people like you that, that understand and support our cause. Uh, lastly, I was uh, listening to uh, the radio the other day, and Frank Shankowitz was on the radio. A lot of you, I'm sure, know Frank Shankowitz. He's the Wish Man. Uh, founded Make-A-Wish and one of the co-founders of Make-A-Wish, and uh, he's a Prescott boy. And uh, anyway, he said something that I heard before, but I, you know, I guess it just resonated a little bit more when Frank said it, and that is that, you know, it's important that you give back to your community, and it's not just about money. If you can give money, great, but if you can't give money, give your time. And so I was thinking about that, and I sort of put it into the context of, I think, where our board and where we're at with, with our Boys and Girls Club is, which is donate if you can. If not, volunteer, attend our events, think about us for your end-of-the-year tax credit, but most of all, be a friend of the club and support our mission, which is serving families who need us the most. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, I got a text message while Joe was speaking, and I'll just read it here uh, real fast. Patrick, I know that Joe doesn't know me that well, but could you mention my name as a board member? Thanks, Travis Stead. So. <laughs> I know you're a junior member of the board. I took my place and everything. Joe really doesn't know you. I don't think Joe knew that. I was on the board for a few years as well, too. So it's a... <laughs> I got the text message. The internet doesn't lie, right? All right, this holiday season, uh, I ask that you consider giving the gift that gives back. Recent changes in the tax law provides a dollar for dollar tax credit of up to $800 if filing jointly and $400 if filing individually for the 2016 tax year. This is in addition to the public schools and tax credits. Every dollar that you give to our local boys and girls clubs is a dollar that helps a child. Please consider donating today by keeping your tax dollars in Yavapai County. If donating by check, you can give it to any board or staff member, uh, or if you would like to pay by credit card, you can see uh, Kristen. There she is, right over there. I so. uh, want to thank you uh, for spending your morning with us, learning about the wonderful things that are going on with the Boys and Girls Clubs here in Prescott and Prescott Valley, um, and what they do for uh, our community and our kids every day. We look uh, forward to a very successful future uh, with our children and thank you again and happy holidays thank you